Hello and welcome to another LAMP Bible Study. My name is James, your host and Bible reader for LAMP Bible Study. Once again, it's another wonderful day for a LAMP Bible Study. So thank you very much for joining today. And I hope that we continue to seek the Lord's wisdom through His Holy Word together. My name is James, your host and Bible reader for LAMP Bible Study. Um, today we are going to finish 2 Samuel today. And I'm currently re reading from a Collegiate NIV Bible. And so, uh, let's see here. Today has been, <clears throat> it's been, it's been a day. <laughs> it's, a, it's been a day. There's been um, a lot on my mind recently. So, I wonder why. Uh, I, because, you know, I shouldn't be, uh, some things that came up in my mind um, to worry about, and I shouldn't really be that way. You know, I shouldn't, every day has its own worry, so just worry about one day instead of worrying about what the future may hold, right? So um, there's a lot on my mind when it comes to that, so I really do have to... <sighs> Exactly. Breathe, release, and give it to the Lord, right? So that's what I'm ready. I'm ready for today's Lamb Bible study. So let's get started with 2 Samuel. And again, I'm going to start with chapter 21. <clears throat> so NIV Collegiate Bible. I'm going to read from other versions as well. So let's get started with today's Lamb Bible study. The Gibeonites Avenged. During the reign of David, there was a famine for three successive, uh, successive years. So David sought the face of the Lord. The Lord said, It is on account of Saul and his blood-stained house. It is because he put the Gibeonites to death. The king summoned the Gibeonites and spoke to them. <coughs> Excuse me. Now the Gibeonites were not a part of Israel, but were survivors of the Amorites, the Israelites had sworn to spare them, but Saul in his zeal for Israel and Judah had tried to annihilate them. David asked the Gibeonites, what shall I do for you? How shall I make amends so that you will bless the Lord's inheritance? The Gibeonites answered him, we have no right to demand silver or, or gold from Saul or his family, nor do we have the right to put anyone in Israel to death. What do you want me to do for you? David asked. They answered the king. As for the man who destroyed us and plotted against us so that we have been decimated and have no place anywhere in Israel, let seven, his, seven of his male descendants be given to us to be killed and exposed before the Lord at Gibeah of, of Saul, the Lord's chosen one. <clears throat> so the king said, I will give them to you. The king spared Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the oath before the Lord between David and Jonathan, son of Saul. But the king took um, Armani and Mephibosheth, the two, uh, the two sons of Ahaz, Ahaz, Ahaz's daughter Rizpah, whom she had borne to Saul, together with the five sons of Saul's daughter Merib, whom she had borne to Adriel, son of Barzelia, the Meholathite. He handed them over to the Gibeonites, who killed and exposed them on a hill before the Lord. All seven of them fell together. They were put to death during the first days of the harvest, just as the barley harvest has, uh, was beginning. So just a quick pause here, or technical. Okay, <laughs> I heard something in the background. So, um, a quick pause as well to for um, just a reminder that David has just recently lost his son, just recently gained kingship back in um, over Israel and Judah, and he also had to just recently defeat. Sheba, who was trying to yet again rise up in the middle of Israel and rise against uh, another person that was rising against David. So um, he just went through quite a bit with his own family and with friends. 
And now um, the land is going through a time of a famine. <clears throat> so David asked the Lord why, and the Lord told him, it's because it is on, on the account of Saul and his blood-stained house. It is because he put the Gibeonites to death. Now the Gibeonites um, were part of Israel, but uh, were not part of Israel, but they were survivors um, of the Amorites. And those that Israel had already made an oath to not go to war with. And so, unfortunately though, Saul, during his reign, he went after the Gibeonites. And, and so this is um, a time where some of his family was still alive <clears throat> and they probably held grudge. They probably held grudge against David. They probably were still um, mistreating the Gibeonites. And so the Lord told David, um, ask the Gibeonites, let the Gibeonites tell you, or he, basically he, the Lord just told the reason, you know, about it. And so he went to the Gibeonites and said, Hey, what can we do to make things right? And the Gibeonites told him. And so now, <clears throat> um, David has followed through, um, with their request. And so, um, there's a lot here, you know, this is during the time where again, David was ru ruling Israel again. Um, he still, he didn't want to, uh, let Mephibosheth die because he had made an oath to Jonathan. So Mephibosheth was not one of the people who was, who were handed over to the Gibeonites, but there were others that were handed over. And again, remember Saul and his children, aside for Jonathan, um, some of his children were really, they wanted to follow the Lord in their own way. They had the kingship and the rulership kind of to their head, you know? So think about that. Do we do that when we get into leadership roles? Do we get arrogant? Do we get pompous with it? Um, just things to think about. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. <clears throat> um, Rizba, daughter of Ai, AI. <laughs> if you know the pronunciations of these names and such, please say them along with us. If you know how to type them up, go ahead and put them in the comments. I'll read them and thank you very much. Took sackcloth and spread it out for herself on a rock. From the beginning of the harvest till the rain poured down from the heavens on the bodies, she did not let the birds of the air touch them by day or the wild animals by night. When David was told what Ayaz, Ayaz's daughter Rizpah, Saul's concubine, had done, he went and took the bones of Saul and his son Jonathan from the citizens of Jabesh Galid. They had taken them secretly from the public square at Beth Shan, where the Philistines had hung them after they struck Saul down on um, Gilboa. David brought the bones of Saul and his son Jonathan from there, and the bones of those who had been killed and exposed were gathered up. They buried the bones of Saul and his son Jonathan in the tomb of Saul's father Kish at Zillah and Benjamin, and did everything the king commanded. After that, God answered prayer in behalf of the land. So, <clears throat> because, again, this is back in the law. This is that eye for eye, tooth for tooth, etc. And the Israel was to remain holy. And so there would not be any sin. And because the Amorites, the Gibeonites, who were of the Ammonites, uh, Amorites called out and were, had been mistreated, this was the resolution. And so once this was done, then the rains came back again and the famine ended. And so when we can take things um, past and present, we don't necessarily always have to think about death either. We can think about just good times and bad times. Are there things that we have done and we know may have not been right and things are good for a while and then all of a sudden things go into the bad. Um, consequences happen. Things 
maybe it's not consequences, just other things that happen in your life and it starts going bad. Do we seek the Lord for forgiveness and do we seek him for guidance as well? Do we um, ask him? Do we ask the Lord? Do we have a conversation or do we just want? Okay, Lord, um, I just need to be out of this and not understand and realize and really take an, an education to it, to take understanding and also take account for it. You know, if it's something that we did, we must humble ourselves and understand and accept and accept consequences and accept our actions and repent. If it's something that um, we didn't do, it, let's say that just bad times happen. Do we um, still go to the Lord and have a conversation with them and and have patience and have understanding and listen and really listen and not try to do things the way we just want to do them? Um, because once we do things correctly, once we follow are in, following in the footsteps and once we're on the path with the Lord and having a full relationship with them, things, uh, things uh, cheer up, you know, things get better. So lots of things to think about here. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Wars against the Philistines. Once again, there was a battle between the Philistine and Israel, or Philistines and Israel. David went down with his men to fight against the Philistines and he became exhausted. And Ishabi Benab, one of the descendants of Rapha, whose bronze spearhead weighed 300 shekels and who was armed with a new sword, said he would kill David. But Abishai, son of Zerai, came to David's rescue. He struck the Philistine down and killed him. Then David's men swore to him, saying, Never again will you go out with us to battle, so that the lamp of Israel will not be extinguished. In the course of time, there was another battle with the Philistines at Gob. At that time, Zebekai the Hushathite killed Saph, one of the descendants of Rapha. In another battle with the Philistines at Gob, El Ahanan, son of Jar Orgim, the Bethlehemite, killed Goliath, the Gittite, who had a spear with a shaft like a weaver's rod. I'm going to go over that here in just a moment. And still another battle, which took place at Gath. There was a huge man with six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, 24 in all. He also was descended from Rapha. When he taunted Israel, Jonathan, son of Shemiah, David's brother, killed him. These four were descendants of Rapha and Gath, and they fell at the hands of David and his men. So what, what this is going over is there were additional giants. So I don't, some say it's an interpretation error. Some say it's, um, some say it's meaning the family of Goliath because there were not, so Goliath wasn't the only giant. Um, there were other very tall people as well, and it was to believed a part of Goliath's family. And so, once again, we're seeing that another person um, in another battle with the Philistines, Elhanan, son of Jer Orgim, the Beth Bethlehemite, killed Goliath. Killed a killed some, another person, another very tall, um, very prominent person amongst the Philistines that was taunting and doing similar things to what uh, Goliath did. Remember, David killed Goliath, right? <laughs> With a sling, a sling and some stones. And so now we have um, other people who are being utilized by the Lord and who are doing similar feats or um, uh, maybe not with stones, maybe in battle, but they are still being able to conquer people who are much stronger, much bigger than they are. And so um, this is showing you that the Lord was with Israel and the Lord was uh, making sure that his name was well known, even against all odds, right? And that's things that we can take about uh, and take about when it comes, think about and take <laughs> from this when it comes to um, reading um, 
in 2 Samuel, we can look at our own lives and, um, you know, things that I was thinking about. This is very interesting, right? I was thinking about um, things in the future, things that could happen at any time, and I was kind of worried about them. However, those worries are something that's humanistic, right? We worry. We worry because we don't know. The Lord knows. And so we need to let go of those and give them to the Lord. We need, whether it's saying them in prayer, speaking them, what whatever it is, thinking about them and giving them to God um, and and asking Jesus, hey, Jesus, I'm, I'm giving these to you because you know, you know what the outcome is going to be. You know what I need and when I need it and you will be there. And time and time again throughout my life, the Lord has been there when I need it, when I needed it, the, when I need the most. It's never been my time. I always, sometimes I get impatient. <laughs> sometimes I get distraught. Sometimes I get, I mean, I, I'll admit it. Sometimes I'm, I, I don't, I'm not satisfied with things, with how things are going. And instead of relax, just relaxing and give it to the Lord, instead of just allowing everything to happen as it should, and because that's happened, and it's happened to me before, I've, <clears throat> I'll give you an example for myself. I um, had um, applied to several positions, and a position came up, and the interview went excellent. I, hit it out of the ballpark. You know, I knew it was going to be, yes, you know, we're going to offer you that job. And some things happened and I, and I received a, a request, um, request for declination. And I was like, very strange. I was like, request for declination. I didn't get the original offer. And there was a back and forth between someone who wasn't who was working for the official, um, stating, well, yeah, you did, obviously, you did. And so that never happened, though. And so I said, yeah, I would definitely accept. And they were saying, the the person, the liaison was like, well, it's too late. We thought you declined, so we need your official declination because we gave you a certain time frame. And it had been a week or two. It had been a couple of weeks. And so in, in this case, that's common. That's really common in, in my case um, for a time to go weeks, maybe even a month or so before a decision's made whether or not um, you receive a, pos a new position or not. So I had explained in an email, you know, in a communication saying, yeah, I would go ahead and take the position. But again, it came back as it was too late. So I was upset about it. At the time, I could have forced it. I actually could have forced it. And something told me not to. Something told me not to. And I'm saying something, it was the Lord. <laughs> plain and simple, plain and simple. The Lord was like, be, be patient. This looked good and the devil he does that, man. He will put stuff in our face and make it look real good, real nice and shiny, but it's not for us. It's not time. And so I said, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fight this. Um, I, I'm just gonna say, I understand that, um, I, I did sort of a declination. Like I understand that so much time has passed and that another person may have been selected um, at this time. Um, so um, thank you for thinking of me or whatever. And I was upset for a moment, you know, for probably a day. But after that, um, I just really, not even a day, because I really prayed about it that evening. And the next day I felt okay. I had a little bit, a little bit of, you know, just a little bit for my own, for my own feelings. 
still there, but it wasn't nowhere near what I would have expected myself to how to react and such. And even knowing that I could have forced it, you know, I could have went ahead and took the job, period. But understanding that had I not, had something happen in the per, the people who were in charge made a mistake selecting me because they wanted some their friend or whoever they know or whatever it may be, had I forced the issue, it would have made for a potential hostile environment, right? And so I understood that that should be, I would want to avoid that. And so I was okay. And I said, you know what? I can still continue to apply. I can still continue to do my best because it's not going to change anything. I always do my best and it's not changing anything. So let me just be patient and continue. And something out of the blue within a very short time came up and there wasn't any, there wasn't anything that I had to do other than hit the application, you know, apply button, but there wasn't any hoops. There wasn't any, anything additional on top of, um, what could happen, interviews, meetings, etc. cetera. There, and it was a much better, it was way better than I could ever imagined. And so I know that when we do things and we think about things too hard, we're not giving it to the Lord. We're wanting to figure it out ourselves too, or we're just obsessed with it. You know, some people can get obsessed with, with those doubts, with those um, feelings of things are not going to play out well, or things are not going to turn out right, or things are not going to, are going to continue not going a way that, um, that's helpful to me. And so what, one way to avoid those is by relying on the Lord and giving it to the Lord and having that comfort, having that peace about it, that everything's going to be okay. It's going to be better than ever. Your, your cup's going to overflow <laughs> with blessings. It's, it's that patience. And I feel like one of our, uh, you and myself, one of our uh, things that we need to learn as humans is patience and understanding. So um, with all of that, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? I knew there was a reason for me worrying about things. And I'm like, you know, I bet there's going to be an answer really quickly to my face. <laughs> and all you got to do is reach out and listen, listen to the Holy Spirit, read, you know, when you can. And sure enough, I have my answer. Don't worry about it at all. Because when things happen, they're going to happen and you're, I'm going to be okay. So let's continue to read David's song of praise. David sang to the Lord, the words of this song, when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all of his enemies and from the hand of Saul, he said, the Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge, and my savior. From violent men you save me. I call to the Lord, who is worthy of praise, and I am saved from my enemies. The waves of death swirled about me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I called out to my God. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came to his ears. Mm, I just got to pause for a minute. For a moment. <laughs> this is deep. This is, this is what love is. And David is able to provide from his gift, his gift, um, gift of giving the Lord back what he deserves. And just reading this, it's just beautiful. It's true. It's truth and accurate. And it just makes me feel it. It makes me feel 
it makes me understand that he's David's just like any other human. We get, we have fear, we have failures, we have sin, we have things, but the Lord loves us so much. He goes above and beyond. And so much so that he gave his son Jesus. And all we have to do is believe that he sent his son and that Jesus died for us to save us from those, from all of this, from death, from sin, from de which equals death. And so it just, it's comforting. And it, uh, when it's so beautiful, sometimes you want to tear up. Sometimes you want, you, sometimes you get emotional. And that's, that's what can happen. That what needs to happen, you know, for some, for people, myself included. Let's continue to read. The earth trembled and quaked. The foundation of the heavens shook. They trembled because he was angry. Smoke rose from his nostrils. Consuming fire came from his mouth. Burning coals blazed out of it. He parted the heavens and came down. Dark clouds were under his feet. He mounted the, cherub the cherubim and flew. He soared on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his canopy around him. The dark rain clouds of the sky. Another pause. So this whole imagery and description and such, some people do believe that God has wings. Um, because many of times it talks about wings associated, like holding me under his wings, under his wing. Now, some, some people believe, some scholars believe it's imagery, and some scholars believe that God has wings, like they, they may believe it. Um, I'm not sure because <laughs> I there could there be visions of uh, the Lord, of Lord of course you know if Jesus of course could I that's a good question I don't know that we'll know until we'll, we'll know until we're with them right a um, lot here it's just full of beauty and. Again, David knows how to describe man. Uh, he he does an excellent job. Uh, let's continue to read. Out of the brightness of his presence, bolts of lightning blazed forth. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded. He shot arrows and scattered the enemies, bolts of lightning, and routed them. The valleys of the sea were exposed and the foundations of the earth laid bare at the rebuke of the Lord at the blast of breath from his nostrils. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. The Lord has dealt with me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands, he has rewarded me. For I, I have kept the ways of the Lord. I have not done evil by turning from my God. All his laws are before me. I have not turned away from his decrees. I have been blameless before him and have kept myself from sin. The Lord has answered me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanness in his sight. To the faithful, you show yourself faithful. To the blameless, you show yourself blameless. To the pure, you show yourself pure. But to the crooked, you show yourself shrewd. You save the humble, but your eyes are on the hofty to bring them low. You are my lamp, O Lord. <laughs> Amen. You are my lamp, O Lord. The Lord turns my darkness into light. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. You, I just want to reread. You are my lamp, O oh Lord. It says a lot. And lamp, your guide, guide the she good shepherd, um, love, wisdom, strength, courage. All good things come from above. All good things come from God. And David is really 
saying how we feel, how we can, how we feel um, uh, about the Lord. And so um, we can, we can understand those times of pain and sorrow. We can understand those times of when things aren't going well. We can understand those times. We can also understand those times of joy and without the suffering. We can understand those times where of success and the Lord's there every step of the way. We can be reminded and we can remind ourselves. And that's also part of having a relationship with the Lord. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is flawless. He has a shield for all who take refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to stand on the heights. He trains my hand for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. You give me your shield of victory. You stoop down to make me great. You broaden the path beneath me so that my ankles do not turn. I want to read this part one more time because this is really, it's really, it's really, it's really spiritual. It's really in deep. It's all of it is. It's just, I, this, I just want to read this again. You give me your shield of victory. You stoop down to make me great. That is amazing because he, the Lord knows that we are sinners. However, he loves us so much that he, he is willing to help us. He's willing to help us with his holiness, with himself, with his being perfect and guide us so that and, and forgive us and love us and love us because he wants to bless us continually all the time and he wants to be with us for eternity and so this is just really david man he he's one of those he's one of those authors in psalms when we get psalms uh when we get to it there's uh, several different authors and we will know <laughs> one when uh, there's a very um well-known um, part of Psalm, Psalm, I believe it's Psalm 23. That's very, the whole thing. The Lord is my shepherd. So um, let's continue to, or before I do, I'm going to pause and say, um, he is our shield of victory. He does um, love us, even with whatever we may think or say or do we can always come to him and humble ourselves and he loves us. So what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. I pursued my enemies and crushed them. I did not turn back till they were destroyed. I crushed them completely and they cannot rise. They fell beneath my feet. You armed me with strength for battle. You made my adversaries bow at my feet. You made my enemies turn their backs in flight, and I destroyed my foes. They cried for help, but there was no one to save them. To the Lord, but he did not answer. Um, so they cried for help, but there was no one to save them. To the Lord, but uh, he did not answer. I beat them as fine as the dust of the earth. I pounded and trampled them like mud in the streets. You have delivered me from the attacks of my people. You have preserved me as the head of nations. People I did not know are subject to me. And foreigners come cringing to me. As soon as they hear me, they obey me. They all lose heart. They come trembling from their strongholds. The Lord lives. Praise be to my rock. Exalted be God, the rock, my savior. He is the God who avenges me, who puts the nations under me, who sets me free from my enemies. 
You exalted me above my foes. From violent men, you rescued me. Therefore, I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations. I will sing praises to your name. He gives his, great, uh, he gives his king great victories. He shows unfailing kindness to his anointed. Uh, anointed David or to David and his descendants forever. And David is speaking truth to this as well. Because in David's line, in David's family line, is going to be Jesus. Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So someone from David's line will be, a descendant from David's line will be on the throne, is on the throne forever, for all eternity, for us. And I believe it was the prophet Nathan that told him this. If I, please correct me if, I, if I'm incorrect. <laughs> Leave them in the comments. So there's a lot here. And so David's feeling the love and he's giving the love back. Um, he may do, th as we read before, he's done things. He's done wrongs. He's sinned before, but he's humbled himself. He's humbled himself and he's given back to the Lord. He's, he, he, he continues to walk with the Lord. He continues to walk, which prevents him from sinning. And that's what he's talking about here. How the Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness. So the Lord provides the righteousness to us. It, we, don't have, we don't want self-righteousness and pride. Because that's what someone else who is kicked out of heaven has. <laughs> <laughs> who was not holy. Um, and so the Lord provides that for us because the Lord loves us. The Lord made us in his own image. Think about that. And that brings me to that other thing about the wings and such. So again, if we're made in his image, we see each other, you know, there's, there's, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> uh, but there, throughout the Bible, there's a lot of imagery of the Lord, of God, of Jesus, of imagery, as in um, strength, fire, uh, you know, cloud, lightning, smoke, things, just all kinds of things. It's amazing because he is God. He is God. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. The last words of David. These are the last words of David. The oracle of David, son of Jesse, the oracle of the man exalted by the Most High, the man anointed by the God of Jacob, Israel's singer of songs. Amen. <laughs> Israel's singer of songs. The spirit of the Lord spoke through me. His word was on my tongue. The God of Israel spoke. The rock of Israel said to me, When one rules over men in righteousness, when he rules in the fear of God, he is like the light of morning at sunrise, on a cloudless morning, like the brightness after rain that brings the grass from the earth. <sighs> um, amazing. Amazing. Uh, rules and fear of God. Following the Lord, having a relationship with the Lord. Let's continue to read. Is not my house right with God? Has he not made with me an everlasting covenant? Arranged and secured in every part? Will he not bring to fruition? Fruition. Fru Fruitation or fruition, this one's fruition, my salvation. There is no A in there. It's just fruition, fruit, fruit, yeah, <laughs> my salvation. And grant me my every desire. But evil men are all to be cast aside like thorns, which are not gathered with the hand. Whoever touches thorns uses a tool of iron or the shaft of a spear. They are burned up where they lie. <laughs> I 
it's it's all it's almost like a prophecy because people who according to the word who do not acknowledge the lord there's going to be eternal burning you know according to this so it's almost like david's a little bit prophetic too you know which he is you know um and this is just a lot it's a lot uh these are sermons right here once again <laughs> and so um uh a lot here um bringing past to present giving thanks to the lord having a good um, relationship with the Lord, um, doing what we can, you know, that we are, we can, uh, we're not perfect. We are going to stumble, but we get back on our feet and we get back to our walk with the Lord. We ask for forgiveness. We humble ourselves and we listen and we wait patiently for his guidance and his love because he loves us. He loves each and every one of us. And so, um, you know, um, to live um, a, in your walk, you you have that, and then that will do something that you don't know. But people will see something. People will feel something, and they'll ask you, "Why are you always? Why are you? Why is it? What do I? Why, did, why are you filled with joy? What is it about you? Why do you feel like you know something?" And when those type of questions come up, you know, whatever it may be, you could have been thinking about something funny. You could have been just enjoy, right? I, when I hear those, when I hear those key words, when I hear, when I hear it, especially asked, I immediately say it's because of the Lord, because it is. Whether or not I was even thinking about the Lord at the time, I know those good thoughts, those fun, funny thoughts, those things that make me exude happiness, ex, ex, you know, show joy on my face or, and just that feeling that others may get. That's from the Lord. And so that's one thing that when you walk, and just like Israel, and the Lord says it over and over again throughout the Bible, the more you walk with them in this way, he blesses you. He blesses you which, you, which ends up being a blessing for those around you. So it's the same, past and present, past and present. When we don't use our thoughts and feelings and our judgments, but we allow the Lord then things turn out correctly how they're supposed to when we follow what the Lord is telling us. Because in our minds and thoughts, we get we have those temptations. We have what may have you of the devil trying to tell us how we should feel and what should, we should think and how what we thought was correct. And then we have the Lord. The Lord is telling us the truth. The Lord is telling us how to go. He is the good shepherd. He is the one that we are to follow. And so when we do walk in the way, when we do walk the way <laughs> and have a relationship that shows the Lord works for us, the Lord works and does the works for us, the Lord takes action for us, all we have to do is be there. All we have to do is acknowledge him and be there and listen and when he tells us, hey, you may not even know. Like I said, I sometimes I'm just I'm laughing to myself and thinking about something. And and somebody's like, you know, every time I run into you, you're like you're laughing, you're joyful. And I'm not and I, I'm not like, oh, I was remembering an episode. Truly, truly, I was. But. Who gave me those thoughts? The Lord. And so I always say, I find I, the Lord's giving me joy again. And it 
and it does something. Just, you know, a smile to a person, um, a acknowledgement, it does something. A lot here. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. David's mighty men. These are the names of David's mighty men. Josheb, Bashebeth, a, a Tukhamanite, was chief of the three. He raised his spear against 800 men whom he killed in one encounter. Next to him was Eliza, son of Dodai the Oahite, or Ahite, as one of the three mighty men. He was with David when they taunted the Philistines gathered at Pasdemim for battle. Then the men of Israel retreated, but he stood his ground and struck down the Philistines till his hand grew tired and froze to the sword. Ooh, my goodness. The Lord brought about a great victory that day. The troops returned to Elizar, but one, but only to strip the dead. <laughs> he stood his ground and was fighting them and, and was succeeding. Maybe, uh, looks like by himself. And then the rest of the troops came back. The rest of his, uh, the Israelites came back and were... Um, looting the Philistines and <laughs> taking, <laughs> taking what the Philistines, the dead Philistines had. Um, let's continue to read. Next to him was Shama, son of Agi the Harite, Harite. When the Philistines banded together at a place where there was a field full of lentils, Israel's troops fled from them. But Shama took his stand in the middle of the field. He defended it and struck the Philistines down, and the Lord brought out a great, brought about a great victory. Um, so we're going through these important people um, through this time period. During harvest time, three of the 30 chief men came down to David at the cave of Adullam, while a band of Philistines was encamped in the valley of Rephaim. At that time, David was in the stronghold and the Philistine garrison was at Bethlehem. David longed for water and, he, and said, Oh, that someone would get me a drink of water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem. Ooh, a quick pause. So this is before um, um, they overtook Bethlehem, you know, which became the city, of, or yeah, Bethlehem, uh, which Jerusalem became the city of David. Anyways, this is, so this is like going back, it's going to jump back and forth between past and present. Um, and so this is very interesting. Take note of this for what's getting, what actions are going to be taken. So this David asking for water and he's saying, he's saying, oh, I want water that's um, like, had, had, almost like had they already defeated um, the Philistines in Bethlehem. So let's see what happens. Okay. So the three mighty men broke through the Philistine lines, drew water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem, and carried it back to David. When he refused to drink it, instead he poured it out before the Lord. Far be it from me, O Lord, to do this, he said. Is it not the blood of men who went at the risk of their lives? And David would not drink it. So he wanted this water that was in a very dangerous area because it was within the Philist where the Philistines was still were. And these three mighty men went, broke through, got the water, and came back. Dedication, right? <laughs> that says a lot. That says a lot. The Lord works through people. The Lord works through all of us. Have, have you ever been able to... It just reminded me of something. Um, have you ever been able to be a part of a team and you came... Something came to mind and you helped create something and it was successful. And it was, and everybody was like, wow, without you, without you, we wouldn't have been able to do what we did or without you, we wouldn't have made our accomplishment. Has that happened? Do we humble ourselves and, um, you know, it's always okay to accept 
thanks and such, but do we also humble ourselves and give it back to God? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for putting that thought into my mind, for allowing the opportunity to happen, for utilizing me. Do we, do we thank him? Those are things to think about. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Such were the exploits of the three mighty men. Abishai, the brother of Job, son of Zerah, was chief of the three. He raised his spear against 300 men whom he killed, and so he became as famous as the three. He was not held in greater honor than the three. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Was he not held in greater honor than the three? He became their commander, even though he was not included among them. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, was a valiant fighter from Kebzeel who performed great exploits. He struck down two of Moab's best men. He also went down into a pit on a snowy day and killed a lion, and he struck down a huge Egyptian. Although the Egyptian had a spear in his hand, Benaiah went against him with a club. He snatched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. Such were the exploits of Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, Jehoiada, um, Jehoiada. I, he too was as famous as the three mighty men. He was held in greater honor than any of the 30, but he was not included among the three. And David put him in charge of his bodyguard. Among the 30 were As Asahel, the brother of Joab, Elahanan, son of Do uh, Dodo from Bethlehem, Shema the Herodite, Elka the Herodite, Helez the Peltite, Pel Ira, son of Ikish from Tekoa, Abizer from Anathoth, Mebunai the Hushite, Zaman the Ahohite, Marari the Netophathite, Heled son of Bena the Netophathite, Ithai son of, or Itai son of Rabi, Rebe, Rebe from Gibeah and Benjamin, Benaiah the Perithonite, Haida from the ravines of Gash, Abi Alban the Arbathite, Asmaveth the Bir Barhumite, Eli Eliba the Salabanite, the sons of Jeshen, Jonathan son of Shema the Hurite, Ahim son of Sharar the Hurite, Eliphilet son of Abishai the Macathite, Eliam son of Ahithopel the Gilanite, Hezro the Carmelite, Peri the Arbite, Egal son of Nathan from Zoba, the son of Hagri, Zelek the Ammonite, Narhari the Berothite, the arm bearer of Job, son of Zerai, Ira the Ithrite, Gerob the Ithrite, and Uri the Hittite. There, um, there were 37 in all. So there was a lot of uh, mighty people that helped out David in his kingdom in times of need. And so um, they all had uh, different um, feats that they had uh, done in their lives. So this is amazing, you know, and that happens. That happens today even. We have people that do amazing things and we can thank the Lord for them um, because they were there. They did what they needed to do um, and they and we're blessed. So there's a lot. There's a lot to think about. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. I think we're going to go just over just a tad. David counts the fighting men. Again, the anger of the Lord burned against Israel. And he incited David against them, saying, Go and take 
a census of Israel and Judah. So king, so the king said to Joab and the army commanders with him, go throughout the tribes of Israel from Dan to Beersheba and enroll the fighting men so that I may know how many there are. But Joab replied to the king, may the Lord your God multiply the troops a hundred times over and may the eyes of my Lord the king see it. But why does my Lord the king want to do such a thing? So remember, like in previous people and previous leaders, when, um, when the Lord doesn't ask to take account, why, you know, what is it? Like some people, they count their treasuries, they're counting people. What is it? Is it fear? Has fear overtaken David? So again, once again, David's proven to be human. <laughs> David's proven he falls off the wheel every now and then. He, you know, he falls out of line. So um, and here's Job. He's telling him. It's actually Job's telling him accurately. Once again, Job's done things in his past too. So Job's kind of telling him, he's like, why are you wanting a count of the troops? We have, we everything's been going great, right? It's our doubt. Don't let our, don't, I know, that's our doubts and our fears and our unknowing of what's going to happen. Let's, you know, past to present let's not try to allow that to happen give those things to the lord because things are going to be out of our control think about it what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind how does it make you feel and what does it make you think let's continue to read see what happens the king's word however overruled joab and the army commanders so they left the presence of the king to enroll the fighting men of israel after crossing the Jordan, they camped near Arar, Arar, south of the town in the gorge, and then went through Gad on and on to Jezar. They went to Galid and the region of Tatim Hodishai and on to Dan Jan and around towards Sidon. Then they went toward the fortress of Tyre and all the towns of the Hivites and Canaanites. Finally, they went on to Beersheba and the Negev of Judah. After they had gone through the entire land, they came back to Jerusalem at the end of nine months and 20 days. Joab reported the number of the fighting men to the king. In Israel, there were 800,000 able-bodied men who could handle a sword, and in Judah, 500,000. David was conscious stricken after he had counted the fighting men, and he said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I have done. Now, O Lord, I beg you to take away the guilt of your servant. I have done a very foolish thing. Before David got up the next morning, the word of the Lord had come to Gad the prophet, David's seer. Go and tell David, this is what the Lord says. Ooh. I remember this one. I don't, mm. Consequences. And we have to not always think, not everything's going to be gravy. For a parent who loves, the parent can discipline too. We got to understand that. I'm, I'm not trying to preclude or prelude you know, what's getting ready to happen, but what David did is not like what was he thinking obviously it was something that was not correct obviously think about it think if if you had tons of people who were against you or didn't like you for whatever reason and you're like how many people do i have that are my friends <laughs> you know like <laughs> did you like that did you? oh my god <laughs> like do we need to go there like no, give it to the Lord. The Lord fights our battles. The Lord, you never know what other people, they may be bullying you and you don't know that they go home and they're being bullied or, you know, that's, I was walking earlier and I was thinking about this hurt, hurt people, the saying hurt people, hurt people. That is true. Sometimes, um, people who are hurt, go out and hurt others because they want not they for whatever reason and so think about it in this case david is not thinking correctly he was whatever came to his mind whether it be fear whether it be gloating over what he has you know uh, because he is king you know he's like hey go count my 
my jewelry. <laughs> you know, what have you. It's not, it wasn't right. So here we go. Before I go on, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel? What does it make you think? Okay, let's continue to read. Okay, I'm going to re read this little portion. Before David got up the next morning, the word of the Lord had come to Gad, the prophet, David's seer. Go and tell David, this is what the Lord says. I am giving you three options. Choose one of them for me to carry out against you. Have you ever heard a parent give their children, child, they, some, the child does something wrong and the parent says, okay, I'm going to give you an option or options. It's their consequences and they're like this or this. Sometimes there's multiple, sometimes there's just two. Think about it. Past, present. These are real, some, sometimes it's real on your face, right? Let's continue to read. So Gad went to David and said to him, shall there come upon you three years of famine in your land or three months of fleeing from your enemies while they pursue you or three days of plague in your land. Now then, think it over and decide how I should answer the one who sent me. David has a very tough choice. He's got one, three years of famine. Remember, just a, a year or two, not even a full year, there was, when, when Israel went down to Egypt, there was people coming, there, there was issues. This is three, three years or three months of fleeing from your enemies while they pursue you. So the Philistines, the king, whoever it may be, and there's pro possibly going to be deaths and battle losses and losses of, um, of things and, and, pro and what, what have you, parts of Israel. <clears throat> think about it. This is a lot to think about, right? On each one. Famine, no water, no food, no what have you. <laughs> the next one, you're in hot pursuit. Some, or somebody's pursuing you to destroy you for three months or three days of plaguing your land. Remember, there was a plague, so Israel had did wrong and there was plague and Moses, during Moses' time, Moses had to go out and say, you know, do the incense, do the incense, stop the, and the plague stopped, but already, I want to say, please correct me if I'm wrong, like over, I want to say it was like either close to 100,000 or over 100,000 people passed because they weren't doing right. They weren't thinking right. They weren't doing right. They were doing evil. They were doing evil in the Lord's sight. The Lord is with them living with them, you know. So think about it. David has a tough decision. Let's continue to read. David said to Gad, I am in deep distress. <laughs> Again, this is a human. I mean, <laughs> I would have been like, oh, I'm in deep. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> I'm in deep number two. <laughs> but it's not, it's not something to, I'm like laughing at now because I'm thinking of it in a humorous way, but it's not, it's not at all. This is very serious and thinking about it. And it's one of those, you know, you either laugh or cry about it too, right? It's one of those where he's dealing with a, not just him, but pe other people. So he's a ruler. So he's also thinking about pe Israel, you know, Israel. And what's going to happen, what could happen on any one of those punishments. Let's continue to read. Um, David, again, David said to Gad, I am in deep distress. Let us fall and let us fall into the hands of the Lord for his mercy is great. But do not let me fall into the hands of men. So the Lord sent a plague on Israel from that morning until the end of the time designated. And 70,000 of the people from Dan to Beersheba died. 
So he kind of, he, he was like, he, he was given, given it back to the Lord, but he kind of answered a little, to me, he kind of answered. Basically, he didn't want to. He didn't want to die at the hands of his enemies. So that first, the hot pursuit, the three months of fleeing, that was out. Um, let us fall into the hands of the Lord, for His mercy is great. But do not let me fall into the hands of men. The famine could have been worse. I'm not, this one, this one was, this, this is, let's continue reading. <laughs> when, when the angel stretched out his hand to destroy Jerusalem, the Lord was grieved because of the calamity and said to the angel, angel who was afflicting the people, enough, withdraw your hand. The angel of the Lord was then at the threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite, or Jebusite. Yeah, when David saw the angel who was striking down the people, he said to the Lord, I am the one who has sinned and done wrong. These are but sheep. What have they done? Let your hand fall upon me and my family. So he's trying to take accountability. Um, not to say that the Israelites weren't holding him accountable because... Of what he just did they were just kind of going along with what they were told so this could be one of those instances where people could have said something someone could have said something and went to david and said look i prayed about this i talked i you know and you shouldn't be counting people instead everybody was kind of relying on david's leadership that happens do we do that People are people. Humans are humans, whether they be leaders or pastors or whomever. When someone's off, like, especially when read it, you hear it from me all the time. Please correct me if I'm wrong. It, you can do that. You can do that in a way that's tactful, that's meaningful, without, without the claws, without ripping into somebody's, uh, with, uh, you know, and um, whatever it is, name calling, cursing, whatever it may be, you don't have to go do that you can just talk to someone and and come to terms and and help that person you may even help them and stop them so again this is old testament this is the law this is uh what happened because dave was not following he's the he was the sh uh, shepherding the lord's people he was the leader and he was not he did not do things correctly and the people were it was almost like the people didn't hold them accountable because they were just fully relying on him. Instead of fully relying on God, they were fully relying on a human. So, and expect, and then expecting the most, expecting more, so much more that it's putting him on, on a pedestal too, right? So you, you know, sometimes we can all make mistakes and we can all ask for forgiveness. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel? And what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. David built an altar. On that day, Gad went to David and said to him, Go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Aroni the Jebusite." So David went up as the Lord had commanded through Gad. When Aruna looked and saw the king and his men coming toward him, he went out and bowed down before the king with his face to the ground. Aruna said, Why has my lord the king come to his servant? To buy your threshing floor, David answered, so I can build an altar to the lord, that the plague on the people may be stopped. Aruna said to David, Let my lord the king take whatever pleases him and offer it up. Here are oxen for the burnt offering, and here are threshing sledges and ox yokes for the wood. O king, Aruna gives all this to, be, to the king. Aruna also said to him, May the Lord your God accept you. But the king replied to Aruna, No, I insist on paying you for it. I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. 
So David brought the threshing floor and the oxen and paid 50 shekels of silver for them. David built an altar to the Lord there and sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then the Lord answered prayer in behalf of the land and the plague on Israel was stopped. Amen. So David asked for forgiveness for himself and the people. Plague stopped. The end with that. And the Lord, the Lord is, he's w wanting to forgive. He's wanting to forgive and forget. And that's what he did. So, um, bringing past to present on this, um, even though some people, um, like to give things, it's okay to pay for those things, you know? Um, and say that you would be, you know, like uh, sometimes people want to do things for me for free and I'm just like, I would be honored to pay for this. And sometimes, you know, they still do it, but at the same time, sometimes they're like, they don't, they are okay with it, you know, and I still am able to contribute or pay or something. Um, and there's, we don't want to take each other for granted. We don't want it also to look like we're, um, we're using ourselves as the tool, as our righteousness. It's not us. It's the Lord. So he's do so David was doing what was right. And so he still paid, he still insistent and paid for what he needed to do. So with that, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's do a quick review. The Gibeonites avenged. So remember that Saul, the previously the previous king, was went after the Gibeonites because he was, which were part of the Ammonites, even though that they uh, Israel had made a oath to these people not to attack them, but he went against the oath because he was overly zealous, um, and it wasn't something that the Lord wanted him to do, but he did it anyways. Remember, I said Saul did a lot of things that he wanted to do. Or, or what he thought was good. He used his own judgment. He used his own thoughts. He used his own uh, righteousness. Not all the time. He did follow the Lord a lot of times. And that's why he's here. That's why, <laughs> that's why, that's why he's important. And so, though, um, the Lord knew that the Gibeonites had been wrong, and so David had to make it right, and that's what happened. Um, wars against the Philistines, now we got into the people who were in Israel who also did courageous things, um, fought other people who were giants, and then David's song of praise. Whew, goodness gracious, David, he is a songwriter, a psalmist, he can write poetry, he can that's a gift. We all have gifts, and David was, this was a gift, and David used this gift. Amen to that, over and over again. We're going to read more about all of David's uh, just speeches and stuff in Psalms, man. Beautiful. The last words of David, David was getting older, more mature, and, you know, he he still was thanking the Lord, still thanking the Lord and praising the Lord and being humbled and wanting to do what the Lord, Lord's will was. And David had mighty men around him. David had protection. David also was blessed. And so we learned about those mighty men. But with all of that, David, once again, had those thoughts and feelings of those humanistic things, had that, had that, um, temptations, you know, the devil tempting him, hey, you need to do this, you're not safe, so David ends up counting his fighting men for no reason other than whatever, not what the Lord wanted him to do, and so he ended up uh, getting a, um, uh, a uh, word from the Lord, <laughs> from through a prophet, whose name was Gad, <laughs> and it was, it was, a, it was a, sad disciplinary action for him. And so David was 
kind of he, he kind of answered it in a way, but not necessarily. He just was like, I throw my case into your hands. Have mercy on me. Still consequences. Plague happened. And so David uh, built an altar and um, does offerings on there and for his own sake and Israel and the plague stopped. So all of everything that we read today, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Thank you so much for joining me in another Lamp Bible study, another great Great Lamp Bible Study. I love Lamp Bible Study. Every Tuesdays and Thursdays they come out. Um, I also have highlights throughout the week and flashlight on Friday. Flashlights on Friday. Um, so uh, if you enjoy, uh, if you enjoy, I hope that we continue to seek the Lord's wisdom together through His Holy Word. And uh, please continue to pray for me. I will always continue to pray for you. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can leave comments in the comments section of YouTube or on Instagram. You can always check that out as well. Um, and there's an email. There's an email on the YouTube uh, contact page. They can always send uh, questions, concerns, comments, or if you want to be a part of Lamp Bible Study. And so uh, this where there's two or more, right? Thank you very much for following along. Um, I hope uh, that... Uh, these Lamp Bible studies are a blessing, a blessing and very fruitful and hope because they help me tremendously and I hope they help you as well. So once again, thank you. Thank you. Thank the Lord. Thank my Savior Jesus. Thank you very much for everything. I just, I, mm. <laughs> it's, it's, it's that peace. It's that comfort. It's that love. And that's what this is about. Love. So wherever you are, I hope and pray that you have a blessed morning, a blessed day, a blessed afternoon, a blessed evening, a blessed night. God bless.